What's going on, everybody out there in Badger Nation? Um, I'm super excited because we have been doing something with our show and bringing in complimentary experts in their field to help us level up our own PPC game by giving us more insight into the Amazon world outside of the campaign manager. So today I'm super stoked. Uh, I have a new friend, Jeff. Jeff, what is up? Uh, Jeff has, you know, we were talking a little bit before the show. You've professionally evaluated thousands of product listings in you and your team's uh, combined efforts. I think that is amazing. Um, I hope to sort of pull out some of my some of that information that you have inside of your head for my own benefit because I want to learn more about this, and I know our listeners will be really excited too. So, Jeff, welcome to the B- hey. to the PPC Den podcast. Thanks for having me, Michael. It's an honor to be on the show, and uh, yeah, you're you're an awesome interviewer, and uh, you guys put out great content. <sighs> Well, damn, I'm liking this podcast already. (laughs) Um, Jeff, did I hear properly that you got your start in Amazon many years ago before you formed your agency? And we'll get into that in a second. But when you first got into Amazon, you did it by purchasing a 20-foot container of puppy PP pads. Uh, Is that the the appropriate puppy PP pad? for $20,000. And that is how you got your start on Amazon. I need to hear some quick backstory on that. Did you, did you know what you were getting yourself into? Or was it one, <laughs> one of these kind of like the show where people are buying a, a container, they don't know what's inside yet. And they're just like, <laughs> yes, give it to me. <laughs> exactly. No, my thought process was I'm working a 90, nine to five job. And I'm like, what would be the coolest, sexiest product to order a whole container nice. to show off to my pr- my friends? And out of all the products <laughs> in the world, I was smart enough to land on puppy pee pads because, uh, yeah, because I'm not always the smartest person in the world. And yeah, it was, I don't know, you, sometimes you just get you know, I'm looking at a list of 20 products and you, you just get set on one product for whatever reason, and then you get all the quotes and then you get tired of, you know, delaying it and thinking everything over. And then you finally just be like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to commit and uh, go for it. And, you know, I not in hindsight, definitely should have realized you can do test orders of maybe $500 or a thousand dollars or some air freight or something like that. So, uh, luckily sold through in like nine months, something like that. It took a long time to sell through that product, mm-hmm. but ended up turning into a, a pet brand that was able to sell later one day. Uh, right on. So I, I guess like ROI positive, even if the you know, that immediate order maybe wasn't as ROI positive as you wanted to. I have to imagine if that was the start of your Amazon education so many years ago, it was definitely ROI positive because it led you where you are today. Uh, And for those that don't know, um, you are the owner of an agency and I'd love to just sort of have you share a little bit more about that because this is something that you're doing day in, day out. Yeah, so I got started with the pee pads and then, uh, you know, launched some of my own brands. And that was back in 2014. And then a, a few friends um, from college, they had started their own respective brands and did Kickstarters and had awesome products. And they were crushing it on Shopify, but they weren't doing well on Amazon. They just kind of threw up their listings. They weren't optimized, which we'll talk about later. Um, and they weren't having success, but they saw me having, you know, modest success, good success with my, you know, non-sexy products. And, um, so they asked for help and I helped a little bit and they just said, can you just like manage it for us? Like just do whatever you need to do to make it successful. So that was you know, my first consulting client, I guess you could call it, but they were just friends and then they referred a couple friends. And then all of a sudden I had, you know, four or five people's brands that we were managing or I was managing. And so then I had to decide like what, you know, it was really time consuming and stressful managing my own brands and consulting. And so at the end of the day, I just wanted to do what was best for me. And so I simplified and decided, let's just help other people's brands, let them do what they're great at. Let me do what I'm great at, which is Amazon. And so I sold out of my stakes of all of my brands and, you know, had an exit there. And uh, yeah, so then now we just focus on turnkey product management. So it's been really, really fun. Right on. Um, So today I'm really excited to grab some 
I, I hate this word. I hate when people say it, nuggets of wisdom. But there I was, I said it, nuggets of wisdom. What else could we say in lieu of nuggets of wisdom? It doesn't get much better than nuggets of wisdom. It's Damn, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an idiom for a reason. So here I am mining for nuggets of wisdom. But we're going to be talking about really three things that good product listings have in common. And what I think is interesting about this is when we were prepping for the show, uh, these were the ones that you like. You came up with. I was like, you know, off the top of your head, what are three things that come to mind that all high-performing product listings have in common? And these are some of the things. And, you know, you shared a little bit about it before we went live. And I'm actually really like, like excited to share it with all the listeners because they weren't the same three that I would have guessed. So I'm super excited. And with that, let's jump in to the first one. Yeah. So the first one, just before I like dive fully into it, just what we're talking about is listing optimization and trying to boost your conversion rates. But let's talk a little bit about like why you need to do that first. So, um, you know, as you know, conversion rate is one of the major aspects of Amazon's A9 search algorithm, right? So if you can have a higher conversion rate than your competitors, you're going to more likely be able to move up the page ranks, right? You want, that's the holy grail of Amazon. If you can get to the top of page one or even somewhere on the top on page one of the search results, that's where you're getting those free organic sales. Um, But you can't do that if you have a 2% conversion rate, you know, you need to have a really strong uh, rate. And then, um, as you know, if you have a really bad converting page, how how well can you do with the ad campaigns, even though you're best in the world at managing ads? What what if someone gives you a really crappy page to send the traffic to? Have you ever been able to, you know, um, have success? The the secret, the dirty secret of a incredibly profitable PPC campaign is a incredible product. Um, so th- it's almost like that's the cheat code. Like if you can activate this and create a product that is super high converting, the all of your PPC campaigns get like way easier to run. It's like you're running in easy mode. Um, or for anyone who games out there, it's like completing all the side quests in the game until you beat the final boss. It's like your character is going to be so strong that like doing sponsored products is going to seem like a breeze. So I just got a PlayStation 4, so I have. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all my mind. Yes. So couldn't agree more. These are exactly the kinds of things and exactly the reason why we want to start bringing out sort of complementary uh, techniques and strategies to make PPC easier. Um, so completely on board with the importance of having a super high converting product listing. Yeah, because you guys listen to this because you probably want ads help. Well, this will help your ads. We're just not talking about the technical right. ads part of it, but this will help your ROI and put more money in your pocket. So, because people always want to jump straight into like, well, just give me the fancy like traffic strategy or give me like what type of ad should I run? But a lot of times they're missing those foundational pieces that have a high converting listing, which opens the door to everything else. So, you know, some of our clients, after we fully optimize their listings, have conversion rates of over 40%. Um, and so that's absolutely, you know, the top, the top tier that we've seen. It doesn't happen with every single client. It depends on the niche and some factors, but that's what's possible. So, like, if you don't know what your conversion rate is, one, that's a number you should know off the top of your head is, like, what's generally my conversion rate around. So go look at your conversion rate in Seller Central's reporting, um, you know, right now to see like, is it 5%? Is it 15? I mean, ideally you're definitely seeing a a double digit percentage is at least a a really good start. Um, So anyways, that's, I just want to get that background first because anytime any company comes to us or we look, the first place that we look is we look at their listing and and see if there's ways that we can improve it because that's the easiest place to make a really, really quick, quick result and change. So, um, so yeah, so that's pretty much that. And I can start diving into some actionable tips for them. Yeah. Before we get to point one, uh, I had a thought while you were describing that. It's really interesting because from the PPC side, a lot of people talk about, you know, keyword level optimization. And absolutely we need to like the bid that you're, you're bidding, you know, whether or not you have negatives, the type of match type it is, all of these things 
absolutely matters. What's crazy about listing optimization is that it impacts every single keyword, every single click, all the time. So if you can pull out, like the change from a 7% to an 8% conversion rate is significant. Um, like that's, you know, that 14% percentage bump, that one point from seven to eight, that 14% percentage bump from seven to eight is massive. So that impacts every single click, every single keyword. So with that, now let's jump in to point number one. No, that's a good point you just brought up. Like a lot of people don't, they don't think of it that way. Like, oh, I, if you boost your conversion from 10% to 11%, that's not a 1% bump. Right. That's a that's a 10% bump in sales. Yes. If you're doing a million a year, you're now at 1.1 million. You just put a hundred grand in your pocket. By that one percent just by change. listing optimization yes yep as, so, as, a, cool. as a quick side note the difference between points and percentages is something that irks me a little bit in the amazon community people say that oh i changed my a cost 10 percent by going from 40 to 30 that's not 10 percent that's 10 points or like 30 to 31 or whatever that's like a, anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. We see it all the time. Um, yeah. So number one, just want to talk about some of the things that we, you know, that we use on our checklist anytime we go through anyone's listing. So number one is if you don't have Amazon brand registry yet, you should definitely apply for it and get it because it opens the door to a lot of things related to listing optimization. So um, you typically have to have a, a U.S. trademark or a trademark um, approved in order to get that. And that can be, you know, typically less than 500 bucks, depending on where you do it. So if you haven't done that, I would highly recommend if you're you know, treating your business seriously and plan on doing this for at least a couple of years, it's worth, you know, 500 bucks to, you know, protect your brand and be able to get approved for Amazon brand registry, which opens up a lot of doors for you. Um, so that's just kind of side tip number one, that if you haven't done that, I highly recommend you just get, get that going right after this episode. Um, and then, so going off of that, what, if you have Amazon brand registry, a lot of things I'll talk about um, are related to that. So number one that a lot of people are still missing is product video. So video is something that we have seen significantly increase conversion rates on people's product listings. Um, you, know, you can often, there's different places you can see it, but ideally you get it up in the image block in the upper left where there's the images and then that last image, it will take the spot of that, it will be a, a video. Um, and that's something that just, you know, a lot of people come to us and we're like, do you have brand registry? They say yes. And they say, do you have videos? And they say yes. And they say, why isn't it on Amazon? <laughs> you know, because they use it on their website or, you know, they did a Kickstarter, or they put it on YouTube or whatever. Um, so they often don't know that they can upload the video um, to your product listings. Um, mm -hmm. And a, a lot of people will say, well, how can I make video, right? Because they're like, That's is it even question. worth it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but also it can, it can not just be used on the Amazon. Let, let's talk about why I have video first. So one is you can put it in multiple places on your Amazon product listing page. That will boost your conversion. But now how, how much more frequent and common are Amazon video ads becoming? Like, don't you think that video ads are going to just become like, you know, predominant over the next couple of years and something that if you're not using it, you're going to get beat by the competition. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. I mean, video Especially, would you would you even say that if someone were to launch, uh, have a product with a video, are they actually ahead of the curve? Like, I feel like I don't see, I, I'm like trying to think about it. I feel like I see a lot of listings without a video on, on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, a lot of people don't, don't have video for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely, you can use it for organic. You can use it for video ads in Amazon now. You can also use it on your website, on your Shopify store. You can put it on social media. You can pay a video editor to splice mm -hmm. up the videos for social media, less than 10 second videos or whatever for you know Instagram or Facebook or whatever channels. Um, it's just an asset that if you make it one time, uh, like a, a pretty decent video or, or hopefully much better than decent, you can use that video in so many ways in your business. Um, but Amazon is one of the best places to use it. But I just want to like, some people just, for whatever reason, they're like caught up on the cost or the time to make mm -hmm. it. But like, we need to convince them first, like it, it's an asset that you can use for years. I'll give you an example. I made, um, with my friend's dad, we, we came out with a Kickstarter campaign because it was a patented uh, dog toy uh, product. 
um, awesome product and it was very like demonstrable, right? Where, where it's great for video. And if you have a demonstrable product, like even more reason to make video. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we did a video. So we, we went the expensive route. Um, I would put like average expensive or we, we did spend like 3,500 bucks. I believe it was on a, on a like six hour video shoot local here. Uh, I think we just found someone off of Craigslist in, um, in our, in our town in San Diego, did a video shoot. Um, did a product shoot as well. So we got product shots. We did product photo shoot. We did a video shoot with dogs, uh, with just our friends, dogs and, um, my parents, dogs. And then, um, the video videographer also edited the video for us as well. So that's one way to go is to get an actual like videographer, you know, to, to make like a, a live shoot. And if you can afford that, that's awesome because we ended up, we only used that. That was the only video we made for two years. We sold over a million dollars of that product over the next few years. And it was almost all through that video. Epic ROI. Yeah. A million dollars of sales off of $3,500 one time. In hindsight, we should have probably reinvested in fresh videos and new videos, but it just shows any video is better than, than no video. So yeah, so that's, that's kind of on the higher end, but for a lot of you out there that just want to start somewhere, I was, there, there's even free like video editing softwares out there like Animoto um, or Movavi. Those are free uh, softwares where you can just literally dump in your product photos, which I know you guys that are listening have great product photos, dump them into this software and it makes a nice video slideshow. It like pans in, pans out and kind of makes it feel like a video, even though it's actually just your, your right. still images. Um, and you can put text overlay, you can do music, you can do narration over it. And those are free software. So that's another really, really cheap way to go. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, another great way is if you just go to like fiverr.com or um, upwork.com or any of those sites or, or Craigslist, you can find uh, like video editors that can do that for you. So you just give them your photos and let them create something like that for less than a hundred bucks often. So there's a lot of ways to go around video. I don't know if you have any other thoughts on that. Fiverr's really interesting because sometimes I'll go down like Fiverr, like holes where I'm just like, wow, I have no, I had no idea that you could pay for this service. Like you can do anything like pay for someone to manage your fantasy football team, like anything. Wow. I, th- I think it's such an interesting <laughs> platform. Um, would you even recommend sending, I don't know, you'd have to find someone who'd be open to this, but like maybe the product owner or the product team doesn't feel comfortable on camera or talking on camera. There's like spokespeople on Fiverr that you can send your product to, and then they can open it and do like an unboxing product tour for probably like a lot of Fiverr people, Fiverr people, a lot of people on Fiverr um, have studio setups that like they do that all day long. Um, So like that shrinks the cost from like the professional editor for 3,500 bucks probably to a couple hundred bucks and you get a professional like spokesperson, whatever it might be. Um, to, and you can stack that with whatever the demographic of the customer you're going after. So uh, maybe it's a, it's a, you know, a cook. So you're, you're getting a certain demographic for, you know, a product that mothers would have or whatever it might be so much. So in general, there seem so basically like all these examples make it seem like there's really no excuse to not have a video like to go from you know no video to a good video because i'm you know i'm sure having a bad video could hurt you but to go from no video to a good video seems like such a take advantage of it so all of these early ahead of the curve type things are, are always advantageous in all of digital marketing. Like when video ads first came out for Facebook, it was like the easiest way to run Facebook ads is to run a video. Um, so it seems like a complete no brainer. Yep. No, I totally agree. Um, so yeah, I mean, lesson, lesson takeaways, if you don't have video, like just come up with whatever's in your time budget that you have in the next month or two. Like if you're super, stretch thin, then, you know, just figure out a plan and just go, go for it. You know, whether it's the free version, the $50 version or the $3,000 version, Mm -hmm. just do it. If you're spending thousands of dollars on ads, which most of you probably are listening to this, (laughs) what's, what's a few hundred dollars towards a video that might literally, you know, take your business to the next level. I I want to, I want to ask a question to sort of assess the importance of this. Do whenever you take on like your clients, 
this is one of the first things that you're checking for. Like you're, you're going to like make sure everyone has a video. So it's that important basically. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and some people come to us like, well, I have 30 products and I don't want to make 30 videos. Okay. Well then just make, you can make one video. That's a brand video that, you know, kind of talks about your brand and, and you can even show all of your different products. You're not saying this is the product in the listing. You're saying like, you know, Jeff's brand of toys or whatever it is. And then like our, our toys are made in the USA and quality. And you can show all the different products in one great video. And then you could even pay a video editor just to put like, uh, you know, in the first five seconds or the first of the last five seconds, put the actual product that's going to be used, you know, in that video on that page. So if you have 30 listings, you make one great video and then have them make 30 variations of the video just with the, the photo of the product at the end. That's accurate. Now you've got 30 videos based for the price of close to one. Yeah, that's amazing. And especially with the price of video editing, video editing per what you get is like getting better value. So I mean, finding uh, an editor like that. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Cool. Let's move on to the second point. Yeah, I think I've crushed that one into the ground. So we yes. can move on to the, move on to the okay. next one. So number two is just, I want to quickly cover some of the other like most important foundational pieces that you have to have in place to, to optimize. So number one, obviously you touched on it earlier. You got to have solid keywords and keyword optimization, right? Um, you guys obviously already know that. So make sure that you're weaving that in there, but don't weave it in where you're keyword stuffing to the point where like it's, it's not even readable and it's not, you know, the main thing is you still want it, the sales copy to be, um, sellable to the customer. Like when they read that, they're like, Oh my gosh, that solves my problem. <laughs> but if you put, mm -hmm. if you put eight different variations of keywords in a row in a sentence, they're going to be like, what is this? Who, you know, what, what is this product? Right? So at the end of the day, you know, everyone knows you need to have strong sales copy, but um, you know, make sure it's readable while weaving in those, those keywords that will help your advertising keyword campaigns as well. And then the other main uh, foundational pieces are your images, um, especially up in your image block. Those are so, so important and make sure that you're not just using plain images, like of just the product alone. Like I see that all the time where there's, it's great. You used all nine image slots, but it's just totally a different angle of the product and there's no infographics. There's no lifestyle images. So, um, one of the quickest ways to do that is again, you go to a place like Fiverr or Upwork and there's amazing people that specialize in making Amazon, you know, images and infographics, and they can just do these amazing, you know, they're wizards with this stuff where they can really um, overlay text over the, over the images and like really, you know, talk through the benefits on the image. Um, you know, put the, you know, if it, the ingredients or the size, the dimensions. So you can, you can really like make the images so much more powerful when you have those infographics. Um, and again, once you have those, you have those forever. So even if you spend a hundred bucks, you know, making amazing, you know, making 20 different amazing infographics, you have those forever. You can use those on social media, on your website and your email list and in your marketing everywhere. So um, it's definitely, definitely worth investing in that. Um, and then also on that same note, let's talk about A plus content, which is where you scroll down the page a little bit more and you see the beautiful A plus content that um, Amazon lets you do now. Same thing, infographics and lifestyle images are, that's another great place to do those or to tell your brand story. So you really wanna have strong visuals as much as possible. And one thing we recommend doing is like, look at your competitors, you know, that are, you know, maybe have more reviews than you or the top sellers. They're probably doing it a little bit better than you or you can at least learn some ideas from them. So th those are a lot of the key basics, I would say that you know, you, if you have those things in place, you're going to be in really, really great shape. Mm -hmm. So that's really interesting. And when you say infographic, two things come to mind, I just wanted to clarify. So sometimes you'll see a picture of the product, and almost like um, over an overlay on that where it's like pointing to a piece of the product and it's saying like rugged durability uh, and then it's pointing somewhere else and it's like you know smooth like comfortable ergonomic fit you're talking about like text and arrows on top of the product to sort of um, illuminate some of the unique benefits and features of the product yeah, exactly. Um, I can't share my screen right now, but for those of you just listening, I can, I can, I'm looking at, you know, a really great product listing and I'll just talk through the image. So they've got the beautiful bottle. It's the supplement bottle, but it's only about half the photo, but then they've got uh, a live model, like a good looking, you know, young, healthy looking female. Um, and then 
I feel like I'm like describing National Geographic. And then, uh, but then you've got the text overlay of like natural mood enhancer, anti-anxiety support, stress relief support, you know, three times the potency. So they're kind of weaving in kind of everything that we just talked about all into one, like, you know, really, really attractive looking image. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's just like one example. Just look at your competitors who are, you know, doing over 100K a month in sales. And I, I guarantee you some of those are, are doing great job with infographics for sure. There's almost like a, a subconscious thing happening when people are looking at that photo that you just described, like they could have had it without text on top of it. And I feel like that puts the burden on the viewer of that image to know what's inside. And it's like, well, they don't necessarily know what's inside of it. And they don't necessarily know the benefits. And like, maybe it's written somewhere else. Maybe they haven't gotten there yet, but like they're forming their own judgments, like in fractions of a second. So like, as they're looking at it, it's like, why not just tell them like, you know, there, there's this concept of like, don't make me think like, just tell me what it is. Like, I don't want to decipher it. Um, like, just tell me what it is. And like, you listed those big benefit statements and like visually was able to see that. Um, yeah. So dialed in on the images and you also mentioned A plus content. It's another one of those things, like it's available, take advantage of it. And out of curiosity, a bit of a tangent, but is there anything in a product listing that is available that people should avoid in, in the sense of like, is there any category, is there any box where the people are filling out that they should actually leave blank when it comes to these? I'm looking at this one. I wish I could show the screen. So on this uh, product here, the very first bullet point literally says, and this is at the top of the page, the first bullet point you read says not applicable. <laughs> That's, that's what it says. What? I think that, yeah. So I think luckily this is not one of our clients. I, I just Googled supplements and I figured they'd have a decent page, but it says not applicable with a, an underscore in between the, the two words. So I'm guessing that's a field, you know, where, where they were filling out the yeah. back end of the listing that was like, I don't know, like, is this ingestible or something? Maybe they, they put not applicable, Whoa. but then boom, now it's showing up as your first bullet point. So they've got five great bullet points below that, but the first one says not Whoa. applicable. So, you know, that's, uh, so that, that's an example of a field that, you know, you, you need to look at your listings as if you're a customer. And I actually recommend that you literally have like a, a friend or, you know, my mom's actually one of my best critics where like, you know, I'll show her my, my listings are our clients. secret shopper. Yes. My mom will tell you when, when something is off or wrong, or you have a bad review, my mom will let you know faster than Or anybody, if your hair is so. messy or <laughs> she thinks, you know, what do you do? Your car's not clean. Yes. Yeah. She's like, Jeff. Yeah. You need, she's like, your listing sucks and you need to shave. Okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically if something is there, take advantage of it. And you mentioned a little, you know, obviously, you know, the, the keyword stuffing of a product title uh, is pretty, you know, hopefully well known. Like you just don't want to keyword stuff in the same way that that product image you're, you want to make the people, you want to make the person viewing this product page, not have to think and guess like, should they buy this? And like, you can use some of that text to help them understand if it's going to be right for them, as opposed to just, smashing a whole bunch of keywords in there. How do you like to think about uh, product titles or, or where do you see people going wrong when it comes to product titles? Yeah, product titles. Um, first, you want to look at your character limit space that you're allowed in your particular category. It might be 200 characters, but it can defer by category. So first you want to know what's my limit. And then I do recommend typically that you want to use most or all of it. I wouldn't, you don't need to go right to the 200th character, but um, as long as it can still be readable, because um, again, that, this is one of the most important things. The, the first thing that people read is the title. So you want it to, to sell the product, give the major you know, features and aspects of it. One other tip as well is um, if you pull up the search results, like if I were to pull up on my phone on the mobile app, because most shoppers nowadays, the majority of traffic on Amazon is through their phone or their mobile device. So if you pull up the search results and search for your product, or your type of product. And, and I want you to look at your product uh, listing and how it shows up in the search results compared to your competitors. I bet that your title is truncated because it won't be able to fit the full title on your mobile phone. So you only get about, you know, maybe the first, I don't know, 50 characters, something like that. 
So you want to see where is my title being truncated. And that's a common mistake that I see where they actually maybe had the most important part of their title at the very end. But so, you know, but most of the shoppers, they're only seeing, you know, uh, the, the first half of it. And so make sure that first half is super strong and makes them want to click, click on your listing, right? You need that click in the search results or whether it's an ad. Um, so that's, that's one common mistake that we see. I, I'm sure that, that's a really nice tip of being sure people, you're aware of where that gets truncated on mobile. So, so far we've got product video, being sure we take advantage of that. Good tips about, you know, how to create a video for, you know, if you have 30 SKUs, how to handle that, May, be sure that that video is in the last image block. Um, you mentioned the benefit of taking advantage of, you know, those, sort of, I, I almost want to call it like AR, uh, like, photos, you call them infographic, where it's got your product and additional product information on top of it, just maintaining good professional looking graphic design with your product, um, some good lifestyle images. So we touched on, you know, the the title. And that already is a lot of great stuff. Um, is there anything else that that comes to mind about these things? Uh, I'm just clicking through my, even I have to use my uh, product listing checklist. We have over 40 points. So I'm saying if any other, I think we covered the major ones. Um, yeah. Let's hit the third tip. Nice. So yeah, the third tip is nice and simple is, is test. Okay. Cause we're talking about a lot of, ch a lot of potential changes, but the key is one, you want to test it, put it into action, but two, you need to measure the results. Did it help or did it hurt? Um, and one of the, the best, things I ever recommend testing, um, and I'd love to hear your feedback on this too, is testing the price. So a lot of clients that come to us, they've had the same price that they've ever had since they first launched their product. Like they launched at, you know, $14.99 and, you know, three years ago, and they're like, they are terrified to raise the price or to lower the price, right? Like that's their price and they, um, you know, they just want to, you know, that's just, they're, they're scared to, to increase it. And so oftentimes we've seen with clients that, you know, raising the price totally outweighs the cons of, of keeping it where it is. And there's so many possible benefits. So one, you might have a weird number, like the, this product I'm looking at right now is $16.95. I bet if that company raised the price to $19.95 or $19.99, I bet they would maybe see a very marginal, small drop off in conversion rate. But the result is, I bet that their profits would go up, right? Significantly, because they just got an extra, you know, three three bucks, or uh, yeah, or yeah, right. they got an extra three bucks right there. It's almost the like top. a thirty percent thirty percent price increase. Like if they were to add five dollars to a fifteen dollar product or so. Yeah. Yep. And so we see that over and over. If you, you know, I, I do recommend trying to get your price to be, you know, ending in a in a nine where it's around the nineteen ninety nine or nine ninety nine or twenty nine ninety nine. Because oftentimes. 22 versus 29 is not a not a huge difference to people um, but 1999 to 2999 is a much more you know bigger psychological barrier um, so i highly recommend you know that you consider you know changing your price and then what else is that going to do right you you know on the ad side that's going to give you a lot more margin to play with to acquire new customers right your acos percentage that you're shooting for just got a little bit friendlier you have you have an extra mm -hmm three dollars in profit um, that you can now pay to acquire a customer so you know for a lot of you i would recommend doing like a, a profit by skew analysis so you can understand you know um, what is your your average margin per product and maybe there's some where you're you're actually you know losing a little bit of money on it maybe it'd be worth you know raising the raising the price yeah that's really it's really fascinating that like that is probably one of the easiest things uh, someone i follow a lot um, is this guy, Patrick Campbell. He's not in the Amazon space. He's in the software analytics space. One of his big tenants is that the easiest thing to do is change your price. Like it, in fact, the, he phrased it a really interesting way. He said, there is no other activity that is more efficient at either at like improving sales than changing your price because like it literally only takes you know how many clicks does it take to change a price of something and the potential impact of that is 
momentous, like even with product video, like even with the easy, easy ways that we talked about, it's still going to take some mental energy and some time to get, whereas changing a price is one of the most efficient things to do, um, where it's like you go, you can go and set it and be done with it hyper fast. So it's, it's very interesting that that was your first one that you tested. And, and I'm curious, like walk me through when that would come up in a conversation, you know, whether it be with, you know, a friend, someone, you know, a client, your own products, at what point do you do that? Is it something you're doing regularly? Like every quarter you're going to introduce a new price test. Is it something you do consistently, constantly testing using like a split testing tool? I know like splitly exists. Um, so tell me how you actually approach price testing. I'm really fascinated. So, yeah, I mean, the first thing we do whenever we have a client is we ask, when, 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 did, when did you last change any of your prices? How often do they say never? <laughs> yeah, most of the time, you'd be surprised. Most of the time, it's, um, what do you mean? Like, change my price? Like, no, no, like, it's $16.95. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, then, you know, maybe, maybe you know, so that's the first step is just simply ask. If they haven't done it in a while, then it's almost like, you know, here's the pros and cons of doing a test, but it's probably worth it. Because worst case... If, the, if you don't like the results and conversion rate tanks, I mean, it's possible. Uh, it doesn't always be a slam dunk winner. Uh, worst case, you just simply go back to your old price, you know, a week later or whenever. And, uh, you know, it, it, the, the world's not going to fall apart because of that. Your customers aren't going to, like, you know, uh, write you a bunch of hate mail just because you just tested a price. And, and you can also offer more coupons and stuff and, and have margin to run coupons or promos and, you know, sales for Prime Day and different different things like that. If that's part of your model, um, you, you now have more margin to do fun stuff like that for your customers. Yeah, it, it, it seems like a no-brainer. And in terms of the implementation on that. So it, so it sounds like you do this on a periodic basis. Is, is once a quarter like an appropriate time scale for you? Yeah, it's usually, yeah, once a quarter, once every six months. But, you know, if you haven't done it in over a year, I definitely just recommend doing that. Right. Um, but sometimes, you know, they are comfortable at, at you know, the 1999 or they're like, I don't want to go higher than that. So sometimes, we, you know, we just have the conversation whether it's worth an additional test or not. But, um, but yeah, it's just one of the, the quickest ways to put more money in your pocket um, and have more margin for your business, yeah. for your own pockets, to hire more team members, to put more into ads. Um, you know, I, I always say you don't want to be the lowest price item on Amazon because <laughs> you're probably making the least money out of anyone. And then eventually someone's going to beat you. <laughs> you know, some, right. Someone like some Chinese supplier or seller is going to come you know, straight from the manufacturer with a really crappy version of the product and they will under undercut you. So I, I never recommend being the lowest price product in the, uh, in the market. I actually prefer to be uh, in the premium priced uh, model is, is what most of our clients see the most success. Right. Yeah. That is awesome. We've covered, you know, benefits of product video, talked about some easy ways to get that going. The power of just being sure that we optimize our images, titles, be sure we take advantage of all of the extra, uh, what cat, like the extra columns, like A plus content, so on and so forth. Be sure that we take advantage of all those things and be sure to test, play around with this product listing and it's probably the easiest, the most efficient thing to test is testing the price. Um, before we tell uh, people where to go and find you, in terms of prior prioritization, we've got product video, updating some images, product titles, and testing. What would you recommend that someone do today? Like, Where do you feel like the lowest hanging piece of fruit is from all three of those things? Yeah, I mean, they'll eventually do it all. Let's assume yeah. that they're going to do them all over the next 30 days or so. But what should they be doing this week? Yeah, this week, I would say, I mean, price would be the quickest win. Like, you could literally do that in the next five minutes. Um, like, that doesn't take long at all. So, if you haven't tested, if you haven't tested your price or you've been thinking, man, may, I wonder if I could sell a, just a few bucks more, um, that would be number one because it's just such a quick win. Um, I would say that don't jump the price up a bunch like you want to actually marginally increase the price because you, you do run the risk of losing the buy box sometimes amazon freaks out if you like just raise the price by 10 bucks or by five bucks mm -hmm. so you do want to marginally increase it you know maybe 10 cents 50 cents you know and just make sure that's not losing the buy box and then just keep notching it up you know over over the course of a few days so yeah so that's that's number one would there ever be a point where you would recommend lowering the price 
Yeah, I, I would lower the price. Uh, I mean, sometimes that that is the the winner. Like sometimes we see people pricing it at you know twenty one dollars and ninety nine cents, and you know customers just are not converting at that number, and they don't have a lot of reviews, and so it's hard to command that. So sometimes we we do you know lower the price to like nineteen ninety nine or something a little bit lower if they're just not converting well in that case. Um, but yeah, but often we're not recommending to you know, slash, slash prices for most of our clients, but I'm sure there are some cases where that makes sense. Well, Jeff, that is awesome. And you actually have, you mentioned a 40 point checklist that you have that people can get from you. Is that free? It is free. Yep. Oh, right on. Yeah. So let people know where they can go and grab that from you. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. So you can just, we'll put it at uh, turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash resource. And we'll make sure that that's there. I think it's called like, uh, you know, I think we call it grading your listing or something like that, like old old school style, like A to F. So uh, we'll, we'll be nice about, about it. But uh, but yeah, but you can take that and you can fill it out yourself and, and just, you know, mark, yes, I have this. No, I don't have this. And like literally in, in like three minutes, you'll, you'll spit the, the spreadsheet has formulas and it'll just spit out a score for you. Um, and say like, oh, you got a 95% or you got a 45%, then you, you need some improvement. So, um, so yeah, we can put it at, at that page. I said turnkeyproductmanager.com slash resource. Boom. Well, everyone listening, you've got your next sort of 90 days of work trying to get a perfect score on this product checklist. Uh, <laughs> Jeff, that was turnkeyproductmanagement.com slash resource. Thank you everyone for tuning in and we will catch you next time on the PPC Debt. Have a good one. Thank you guys. Thanks, Mike.